come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and germs, to the Saturday Night Freak Show Surveillance and Detective Agency. Ooh, we are. Shit. Yeah. We have new things to do for you. Open only on Saturdays for some reason. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we don't do anything. We'll else. make it a good Saturday, though. <laughs> <laughs> Might snoop some some trashes. You never know. Uh, okay, but seriously, we're a podcast that talks about movies. Uh, you should hit subscribe if you haven't, if you're just finding us. If you ha- are already subscribing to us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, There's buttons for tune in radio more, it. then thank you very Give much. Give us a funny emoji face or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know, right? Yeah, they got just, hearts. Give us the and, like, poop emoji or Give something. us the, uh, the squirt gun emoji. Right, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, apparently they're replacing it. Give us something. Mm-hmm. Join the Freak Show family. Uh, so every week what we do is we watch a movie here in the Dank Dark Basement, and then we sit around the bar and we talk about it. For and, your entertainment. And, and berate the person. Right, that usually, shows usually. It. Every once in a while, you're wrong. like, what the fuck? That's what why you never know what it is. I thought that this was special. I keep saying it was like it's Russian roulette. I That's like what Corey the Russian Hame, roulette okay? is. You're, you never know what the reaction is going to be when you show a movie on the freak show. Mm. So let's go around the room and introduce ourselves. Travis. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin, and tonight we watched my movie, and it was called The Resurrected, and it was directed by Dan O'Bannon, Dan O'Bannon. in the year 1990, but it didn't actually get the released until Lord. 1992. <laughs> they did not want to release it. That's no, what I read. Like, no, the world's yeah, not no. ready. <laughs> they're like, Hold yeah, it back. We're not ready. The world. <laughs> <laughs> we're not ready. The world's not ready. <laughs> Our financiers. Most people are not ready. Stockholders well, are not ready. This is like, somehow the rights got held up by some company called Scotty Brothers Records. They're the ones who actually produce this. Oi, we're the That's resurrected. Scotty you Brothers. can't be calling your movie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They yeah. probably like, the rights go for sale and just like a weird hedge fund will buy the rights to the Terminator franchise. Mm-hmm. And- this shit goes off here, so they probably just like, yeah, we'll buy the rights to that. Well, these, actually these guys produced it. it, and then they went bankrupt ah. before it was released. So somebody else purchased the the, gotcha. the rights to it, and then oh. was like, "What do we do with?" That's this what movie? I was gonna say. Someone had to have bought uh, some sort of debt or bankruptcy. Yeah, sure. yeah. All oh, right. Dude. Well, here before we get really going on this, uh, oh, no. this is gonna be a spoiler cast for Definitely. those of you who haven't seen the movie. But uh, so let's talk a little bit, if I may, set you up with like how this movie came about, and then we'll talk about the movie itself and spoil the shit out of Please it. Do. So, yeah. listener, we'll give you that moment where. Now we're going to talk Beep. about that. All right. All right. So Dan O'Bannon is the guy who is responsible for making this movie. And he is a goddamn horror and genre icon. Yeah. Because Indeed. like his first thing that he ever did was he worked with John Carpenter on John Carpenter's very first movie called Dark Star. Dan O'Bannon's in the movie and wrote it. And he's written other genre uh, super heavyweights like Alien, Alien. and uh, Total Recall. Screamers. <laughs> he wrote Screamers, everybody. He did the, the, the B-52 scene from Heavy Metal. Yep. He wrote the All original right. comic book scene. It was actually about gremlins. It wasn't about zombies. But yeah. Dan O'Bannon wrote the original. He's into all that stuff. I mean, He's and, a, one uh, of those gr- Force... iconic 80s. Fu- oh, we're turning the fucking living dead. Yeah, well, that's where yeah. I was going I mean, with that. Yeah. Like, right? He finally got his directorial debut with a movie called Return of Living Dead, which is for those of you who and don't no know this, no one was left unmoved. Yeah, a zombie classic. But for those of you who don't know this, I think Return of the Living Dead is responsible for at least cinematically giving zombies the hunger for brains. Yeah, brains. It's brains. really the only place it comes from. Does it Everything come from else comics, is like DC Comics or something. Where did he get? I'm no, thinking he always, got it somewhere. And... They just had to separate. I'm sure with copyright, you had to separate right, Night of right. Living Dead from Return of Living right. Dead. These are brain zombies. This versus... is flesh versus brains. Yes. Right. Brains, brains. You so know, it's like we're not eating flesh. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's true. That's not what we do. They're, they're like screaming like flash. Zombies that run. The guy comes yeah. up and is like, they're definitely not George Romero zombies. Yeah, they're not. They're, <laughs> but notice yeah, you can't say it flesh is. anymore. <laughs> I'm embarrassed because I have a picture with George Romero where I'm holding up a Don't shirt that says that. more brains. <laughs> like, I like brain eating zombies. I look at that picture. I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that movie is a goddamn classic. We're all going to say, right? And if you haven't seen Return of the Living oh. Dead, for God's sakes, get out and uh, check that one out. Oh, so so his second 
uh, movie yeah. as a director is The Resurrected. The story on this was, uh, so this is an adaptation of an H.P. Lovecraft Ooh. story called The Case of Charles Dexter Ward. The problem, I think, with adapting Lovecraft is there's they're really not written as like a drama that you can break down into a cinematic uh, right. thing. Because there's usually... Like, the narrator isn't the main character, uh, and then there's these flashbacks within flashbacks, as in, like, you know, yes, the guy right. telling the story is telling a story about a guy who found a book, and then <laughs> yeah. you have to, like, go into what that book says. And I read In two that books. book, there's another guy who found, like, a treasure trove of envelopes, and here's what all the letters were, <laughs> yeah. and that, you know, and they're just not really oh dramatically... God, where are we at? <laughs> yeah. I'm so sure the, great stories. And really, not every single... dramatically, like... Every 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 H.P. Lovecraft story I ever read really is like it's the last twenty pages. I mean, he he builds and builds and builds and tries well, to like give this you movie. this rich history. Oh, yeah. He wants to make it seem like an archaeological dig. All yeah. his stories has to seem like it's like, oh my god, we're reading books and we're getting deeper into and there's other all things. these strange these, things he, happening. And yeah, and by like, the end of it, they all kind of coalesce. And you and can only like, imagine the, the horror. Yeah, and like, somebody only, goes insane. Yeah, but you can only Somebody imagine the horror. Insane. And that's the problem with movies, because movies are so visual, and Lovecraft is so internal. Mm-hmm. Lovecraft is so what it does to you. The, mm-hmm. the, you see horror, and you're like, oh, you just go mad, yeah. because what you saw was so fucking unearthly or so whatever. Yeah, it's hard to translate in movies. Yeah. It is, I think, because they, you know, you're trying to find that. I mean, like, well, you look at, Without like... Even Reanimator, right? Like in Reanimator, the narrator isn't Herbert West, yeah. you know. But when they made the movie, they made Herbert West like. Well, I guess he's a secondary yeah, character, right? Yeah. I mean, that Dan you still have your is. main character in Reanimator. Yeah, but he's not the same guy who's the main character in the book. Not in the book. Isn't he? I'm I don't sure. Think, he there's is. no Dan Kane. I don't believe in the book. It's like some the the narrator. He's, is he's somebody just else. a narrator that dealt with him, but I yeah. I can't recall if they name him. But anyway, well, the solution <laughs> that so I guess the way that this the way that I hear this the way it came about there's a screenwriter named Brent V Friedman who's credited with the script for this movie and Dan O'Bannon apparently were as both uh, H.P. Lovecraft fans were developing this story for a movie at the same time. Uh-oh. And O'Bannon Shit. said that basically his, his Let's method into production. Of, of solving the problem with the H.P. Lovecraft story is if you create a framework and all new characters that are up front, which would be the private investigator in this movie and his team, and they're investigating... The book, the the story from the book, because the story in the book is narrated by like the uh, a physician, I guess, of Charles Dexter Ward, who kind of does some kind of investigating. He comes up with the case of Charles Dexter Ward. Uh, Why? Because did Charles Dexter Ward go to him, or did the wife? It's like the family doctor, right? Yeah, because his family noticed like. Shit, that song already sounds more interesting. Like, well, that's the way I guess Friedman's <laughs> movie was trying to go, like, you know, with the doctor angle, and O'Bannon's script went with the uh, detective, you know, added the whole private So you can have access. But they used Friedman's ending. I guess he said that Friedman had figured out the ending to the movie. I'm going to blow it up. <laughs> blow the hell this is out brilliant. Of it. I love it. But the thing, and again, before we start talking about the movie, I guess what happened, like, The Resurrected is considered by Dan O'Bannon. I just saw an interview with him on the Return of the Living Dead Screen Factory desk where he said it's like a lost film. Like, nobody's seen The yeah, Resurrected. Yeah, dude. I was, I was just thinking, I'm like, dude, I've been in video stores, and I, you may it's like, why haven't I seen this? Seen, yeah. Well, it was also known as Shatterbrain somewhere. Yeah. I've never seen it. When I saw it on video, it was called The Resurrected. It's got to be overseas. And in Germany, it's called The Resurrected the, uh... in their new yeah. Blu-ray special hmm. edition thing that they've got going on. So I don't know where it was called, Shatterbrain. It was originally developed under the title The Ancestor, and I think the title The Resurrected is just as bad. I think like, the... it's a boring <laughs> title, you know? Shatterbrain I mean, doesn't... intrigues me, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I'm like, that's probably why they did it, is because it sounds just fucking kooky. Like, oh, Shatterbrain. Yeah. You're going to see some weird effects. It's like Metal Storm. Am I right? Oh, shit. Okay. It's coming. Oh, yeah. it's coming. So, oh, it's coming. It's building up. Well, anyway, uh, O'Bannon... So shot the movie that he wrote and then got into the editing room and then the company like went to shit. So he says Ooh. that the movie that was put together was put together without his input. Oh. And they basically used outtakes and they put together a different movie than what did he ever do a director? Like no. 
No. As damn. far as I know, there is no director's cut. They're trying to as like well track down things. his widow to find it. Dan oh, O'Bannon damn. died last yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, to see if there is like so, a hmm. work print of his original cut because I mean that's one of the things with this movie. It's like it you could can use tell. some editing. This yeah. fucking yeah, movie got sure. edited the fuck out. I mean, this whole movie is narration over scenes they shot. It's just like, oh, they're the, the movie's playing while people are just saying we found out this. Is, I'm like, if oh go my back god! To San Francisco in 1989. Well, some of that, I think that it's trying to <laughs> yeah. evoke the like the H.P. Lovecraft, the narrator of the yeah, you know, to make it sound like a literary to. thing. There were but also that's five why, minutes of black in this movie. But that's why there's a difference between a book and a fucking movie. It's like we're seeing this. We don't need you to be like it was sunny three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, San Francisco. But it was, was, I was uh, in my office. My assistant was smoking. All okay. right, so yeah, it is set up as a mystery uh, where a private investigator named John Mark is approached by the wife of uh, Charles Dexter Ward to investigate why her husband isn't talking to her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a hook for there our movie is. right there. Uh, Charles Dexter Ward is played by Chris Sarandon, and he is Bravo. off in the carriage house of their estate yeah, doing weird things that house? produce, as in, you do in H.P. Lovecraft stuff, uh, strange lights in the middle of the night. Right, Very yeah. from beyond-ish. Yeah. What's yeah. in there? Leave! What's he it, doing? It actually starts out like a, an H.P. Lovecraft movie should in an insane asylum. You know? mm, yeah. 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 Where yeah. you find out that in a bloody scene, Charles Dexter Ward has escaped from an insane asylum. So you're like, what the hell? So this is the setup to the movie. It's like... Yeah. It's like burn marks on the floor, a headless orderly in the corner. And then Marsh is in his <laughs> office with like a bloody wound. He's like... I'm reg- that's what I thought was cool. It's like that is how they should do a modern day Lovecraft is through audio tape. Like I'm recording this for, for prosperity. <laughs> you know, I just no one will believe me. But yeah. that, yeah, like, that's but cool. You, but you, you don't him, like you make him book. sound like he's on the edge of death's door. No, but no, you have been like, like that for four days retelling the story. <laughs> That's yeah, what it dude. felt like. He got all real chipper halfway through. Dude, this like, movie. Is this narration? Well, this right after, I thought like... this guy was so boring to listen to. That's like a narration by this guy? <laughs> He's going to be <laughs> like... By John Terry? Yeah. Well, I mean, we it, were it's going the down tropes down. of uh, film noir, right? You're yeah. trying to work yeah. in the... But it's not that cool, edgy... Like It's just like this... We went through uh, Punks. I mean, the, what was the name of Punksatonic? Punksatonic. Punksatonic. Something like these that. have to be like Puxet. 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 There you like, go. Patuxet River. Puxet. Puxet. Yeah. Yeah. It takes place Puxet. outside Puxet. of Providence, Puxet. which you got to have if you're doing an H.P. Lovecraft. Mm-hmm. So I guess like that's the thing. Like it's working in like all these tropes in order to kind of like wander around the actual like what's actually happening. Yeah, with we do not want to Charles, show you. No, Charles let's Dexter wander. Ward. Well, I mean, this is like an hour and a half of setup but they and an just, hour and a half of reveal. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem with this movie. It's like, it would have been interesting because, I mean, I don't want to, you know, quickly rush to like whatever, but. But I will. When the Because, I mean, because they're already in an office. Why doesn't the woman tell him the story? You know, she's just like, find out what my husband's doing. Then he has to find out shit. And he's like, what the fuck is like, well, he found a trunk. And it's like, well, why don't you tell me this shit? He found a trunk and there was a a picture of his ancestor that looked exactly like him. And, yeah. uh, and uh, a Joseph Kerwin, who's from the year 1771. Yeah. And it's so like, that's what happened. Lady, this guy, that would have been good information <laughs> to have that in up our front. first. Yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I she doesn't it. understand kind of... that that was related. At uh, that I'm point. sorry. I didn't get it. You know, that's where it's That's weird. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> Well, basically, uh, no, he's very good. if we were painting <laughs> yeah, this in, yeah, yeah. in broad strokes, right, the uh, Charles Ward finds all this information about his ancestor, Joseph Kerwin, mm-hmm. and uses these magical spells that are left over in order to. That's one thing we do find out is that there, he's the one like clues that get before they even find out any information is something about like. All these um, corpses that have been dug up, and they've all been from magicians and sorcerers yeah. and stuff like that. What'd so, you get out of that? Because I know it's in the that, book. What, magic but, bone? I don't yeah, know. But, <laughs> like, what was more, he doing? More opportunity them? for like, like you know, a little help in well, what he was trying to find, do. Like, do, ah. do sorcerers bury their secrets with them? <laughs> you know, like if you were like, how do I beat that? Life, maybe there was uh, something. Maybe like, who was a like? Would I go dig up Anton? Oh, I mean Anton Lavey, Anton like Lavey. A sadist, but like I don't know. I mean, black <laughs> magic, right? I mean uh, Nicholas Flamel or something, yeah, right? Like, yeah, do you he, he was, dig up? His remains were down there. Yeah. Would they get 
buried with their <clears throat> mess. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. I really. All right. So I'll tell thing. you what he was doing. Ooh, oh, you tell me. Oh, if from the, this is what Colin does. He set this up with inquiries when he knows the <laughs> so, answer. Well, yeah, you read the this, story. But yeah, I read because I read, read the, the story. Because yeah. I'm like, see, it's not the movie information. I appreciate that it's in the movie, but it's one of those things where like I don't think they sell it. But it, it, the idea is that uh, Kerwin has, you know, even in the past, been digging up these, you know, ancient warlocks. And then he's bringing them back to life oh. and interrogating them. Oh, cool. So he is getting Ooh. his information God damn it. by bringing these people back that would have been and cool. chaining Far more them up and interrogating them. That would have been really interesting. It's like this movie <laughs> yeah. tries to be such a like a secret that it's like we're, they're not telling us the story. <laughs> you know, it's right? just like, God damn it. Shh, don't say anything. No, no, no. We have to like make a phone call and just be like, I found some stuff. You want to talk to that lady again? We'll go out to the house. But some of this is like, I mean, both in the structure of the novel and I guess shared with the the, the structure of a detective story, right? It's like you got to peel back the layers of the onion until you get to the revelation, which will be a surprise, you know. Uh, The private investigator goes to the house and he poses as a fire um, inspector or whatever. And that's where you meet some weird... The Asian sex slave. Asian guy. I I can only assume he was a dead guy. (laughs) Is that why his eye was kind of dead and he had some, like... It looked like he had open sores, I guess, maybe? I don't know. He looked like he was too put together to be a dead guy. I don't know how well... Because they say later in the movie that... Like, as long as you have a majority of the body, Remains. you can, you can yeah. like, create a dude. So I'm imagining that if a dude does look like that, it just means you're missing, like, a pinch of his... <laughs> right. Like, just a pinch. So his eyes, like, uh, you know, there's just something fucked up about him because you don't have all his remains. Chris Sarandon's always got his little slave doing his work for him, no matter what yeah. he's doing. You gotta have a, a Renfield guy. Yeah, I'm not sure. Have, like, I mean, this guy didn't even say anything, really. Yeah, he's just Raymond the Chinese help. Well, he's like a Raymond. junkie. They say he's a junkie, right? So he's a <laughs> oh, junkie yeah. that he's been supplying, apparently, with heroin or something to keep him in his employ, bringing in these large crates of raw meat and dead animals. Yeah, so first I'm thinking, like, so does that mean Charles Dexter Ward is already, I mean, that's where my wheels start turning. Is he already dead? Is he, because, I mean, we just look at pictures of, like, people eating people, and you're like, ooh, maybe. The famous Goya. This has to be. Saturn eating his young. That's right. Or that's story. right. <laughs> Paintings of dead <laughs> eating people. Is that what he, no, that was Saturn. Well, Saturn, Saturn eating, eating the it. Titans. His sons. So, yeah, there's a point, you know, because you were like, why is oh, Chris Sarandon doing movie. this movie? And I'm like, uh, just yeah. wait. It's so he can Got act. It. He gets to act like a couple of different, uh, uh, you know. Uh, well, we kind of made fun of it, right? Because you're like, <laughs> right, you like, right. He changes his personalities. He yes, changes yes, his yes. accent. We're like, okay, he's British now? Yeah. Like, great. Well, it gets. It I've get, obviously uh, become much more intelligent since tux, you've been here, my tux, my dear. Yes. <laughs> I say whilst. Yeah. Well, you know, it's whilst. he's got like. I mean, we learned later that's because his brand new vocal cords, right? Oh yeah. 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 Well, his <laughs> yeah. Charles Dexter Ward at, at some cords. point seems to be possessed by his ancestor Joseph Kerwin at some point because the 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 guy the detective goes up to the house and it's like why is he speaking like he's you know yeah. antiquated language yeah old yeah. ye oldie English yeah. see you on the morrow <laughs> yes a good day to you. Charles or uh, Joseph Kerwin like was has been experimenting in the bowels in his basement dungeon underneath mm-hmm. his uh his farmhouse which a uh, young Charles De- Dexter Ward inherits or just, the, takes. Huh? or just takes. Or just takes. Like, gets, it's in the, it's it's in willed, the family. It gets willed to him. Right. <clears throat> and then he's just like, let's go look at it. And then just is like, mm, this is mine. I always love it in these type of movies. I think it's like part of the thing that you got to have to do like an H.P. Lovecraft adaptation where not only is there a basement layer to your uh, house, but then there's the hatch that opens down into the very depths. And then yeah. when you get down there... Oh, yeah. There's a stairway that goes down from there. You're like, where in the fuck are we? Like, we're <laughs> descending into hell. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, because they find uh, a uh, what the diary of a guy named Ezra, Ezra Ward. Ward. Yeah, Ezra Ward, which in takes us back in time to the uh, old. And we actually days. find out that that which 
how would they even well, well they found out that that property i mean it would all have to be linked through the property right because they wouldn't just by reading a journal they wouldn't know like he looks exactly like it <laughs> you that's know from they, the, that's from the painting the, the painting, painting the that's painting, true yeah but they, but they think, don't they think the painting is of Ezra Ward, right? Until they find the journal no, and they find know, out. No, they, they, know, they, they know, know it's it is. They know oh, they know it's of Kerwin. But he looks just like him. All right. Yeah, but yeah. Kerwin like, lo- looks like young Ward, so it's like, how come he doesn't have the family name? And we right. find out through the flashback that Kerwin had sex with Ezra Ward's or at least to, wife no, to be. Yeah, yeah, or at least. So that's why the resemblance is in the... Yeah. And Kerwin sets up this diabolical plan, knowing that he's going to be tried for witchcraft. He has his remains preserved in a way according to his magical rites. <laughs> As you do. As you do when you're a diabolical, evil magician, so that he can be resurrected. Ah. See Which how is did crazy. There? He's the resurrected like of the title uh, later in. I mean, did they say where he found the information for eternal life? In the diary? Well, Ward or Kerwin? Yeah, I'm talking about oh, Kerwin. Kerwin. He was just they, a He just magician. had it, just, right? He's he just, always been an evil guy. He just right. was just evil. Always, always he always had it. carts delivered to him twice in a week. Yeah. Yes. So we knew he was a witch. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you don't need that much meat. But, uh... Well, well it's always... It's another <laughs> no. thing. Your cholesterol. Guess, yeah. <laughs> it, it turns out that when you're resurrected, your uh, brain waves and your respiration and all that's all fucked up. Yeah. Because, of I course, he why. gets committed at some point because he's talking like, uh, you know, 250-year-old dude. But this is one of the aspects of this movie that I kind of latch on to is the... Uh, like, I've always wanted to see a movie... I guess I've seen a lot of movies. Well, the one that was done well, and I'm not saying this is it, oh, where you were to take a person from the past and uh, bring them into the modern day and go like, Warlock? hey, you're in the, yeah, but this is my problem with them. I'm saying that like they, the character who gets transported into the modern day rarely has like a, uh, you know, like, Inner. Uh, uh, you know, like a, they lose their mind. Right, he's got to grasp sync up on. with like everything that has changed so much in. Oh, in but, uh, but this guy's just hanging out in his own house. Yeah, right, he doesn't he's need not to. Yeah, venturing out in the world. Yeah, true. And you don't know when. I mean, because that's the big like woohoo. You don't know when Charles Ward changed with Ezra. No, well, Kerwin. we do because Kerwin. Um, there's a moment when uh, the well, wife comes to the detective don't... with uh, the answering machine because the answering machine recording is Charles Ward Holy warning shit. her, you know, get out of the house because he's warning her that right. the alter ego or whatever the disguise uh... that, that Kerwin's wearing. Yes. He's out to get I knew that at the beginning. As soon as I saw them flash on him and then never show the guy in the beard again, I'm like, that's Chris Sarandon in a beard. Yeah. Yeah. I have a feeling. Dude, we should do a fan edit. We can make this movie. I think we could. It might only be 45 minutes, but it'll be fucking good. Yeah, like you'd get rid of all that stuff with the neighbor across the street, the guy into the the investigation that takes you to the the gas station. and (laughs) I mean, like you could lose a lot of this movie. Because that's shit that's trying to be scary because we don't have any, I mean, this, it's not a scary story. It's just not a scary story. It's a it's simple investigation intrigue. story. Yeah. It's intrigue. It's like, what's happening so, here? So, but since it's a movie, it's a visual medium, they need to try to find no dark, scary garages and, like, you're stepping in dog's blood. It smells like that over there. That guy was not Just British, like that. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't that British. He was <laughs> but I just think he's, he's talking about death. death. He was an old dude you know, in Providence. I'm going to say he didn't sound like that. But, I want to hear your I like impression. This. He should have been <laughs> talking like with the Amity Act. Yeah, I, like, oh, I, I like this know. dramatic It smells pasta. just like those dog <laughs> That's closer. Uh, uh, yeah. He's in the yard, not too far from the cat. <laughs> in the yard, not too far from the cat by the cat. <laughs> But then we like. But so yeah, they're trying. But if we to, call that, then we miss like the neighbor getting killed and that awesome close up of the body. And I will have to say, I mean, that's where I think the money went in a weird way. The money looks like it went towards the special effects. The special effects uh, were really they're pretty wonky toward dude, the end, though. That's, no, I, I, I the, wouldn't the mechan- think so. Uh, for, for prosthetic for, sculpts, like yeah, dude. For for even for early nineties, yeah. it takes the entire movie to get to some effects. But once you start seeing them, I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Well, there's but a even lot of they this, knew, though. They're just like. That's why there's five minutes of black in this movie. Uh, the modern day people end up in Kerwin's old, uh, like, dungeon, right? They right. get yeah. down there. Because the, the wife, the right? the wife is just like, I mean, everybody else has a, they have a decent idea. Like, fuck it, let's just blow it up. Unless she's like, no. Well, Kerwin, I want to know what's down I there. Need to know. Wouldn't well, you want to know what's well, down there? No. Why are we blowing it up? Kerwin gets like, 
taken to the insane asylum. We, well, I think we yeah, yeah. Well, because that was they very weird, get right? They're just like you're living in a dirty house. You go to the insane asylum. It's like what the fuck justification. Were there, no, I think there were murders beforehand. Well, there's all. Uh, the, I think he's the like road. grave robbing or something. Right, he's grave robbing if nothing else. She has, as his uh, spouse, has the power of attorney. She can have him committed. Really? Yeah. Because they've so got, right now, if they're yeah, building, don't ever get married. They're I don't building know the if, case okay, for that he's insane because like yeah. he's flipped out. So like, both what, your. Everybody here that's married, I will say. If I went nuts, if, my wife if your spouse was like, he's fucking nuts. Yeah. They could just have you committed? I mean, I unless... Think, like, well, you have to have if evidence. If you right. think you're evidence. a 1770s mad scientist, I don't know. But he was a, a bad he's idea. pretending he's Charles Dexter Ward. Yeah, but, but he's, they, he's But by like, this time, they've already figured out that no, he... No, not yet. Yeah, they have. When they... When they commit him, even if they haven't, they no, have him on they accusation. Haven't because they have the private eye of... doesn't find that until he finds his suitcase. No, no, no. Right now they think. Oh, sorry. Right now they think he's he's convinced himself that he is. Right. They think right. he's crazy. They don't right. think he's right. the but, guy. And you've got, got, got a witness. You've got the PI. But, and but I'm his just saying, is it, it's based on like cop reports what, of all this the stuff that's going on. Right. Animal carcasses or something, grave and like the, the grave robbing. Yeah. But what's the evidence? I don't see. I don't see how this movie shows the evidence behind it. They just show, like, a private eye bringing a bunch of cops, and they're like, I want you. Right. I'm not saying that's You're right. You're under arrest. They're not making the thing explicit, I don't think. Yeah, they're not. To, sh- get, to get him I'm just committed. wondering, you know. Yeah, they're saying that, like, the cops have been called out there. There's, like. If nothing else, they go there, and they get attacked, right? <laughs> yeah. So the so, descent yeah. into the caverns. Sean's it. complaining that the thing is like it's five minutes of black. Have you ever seen a movie called uh, Wait Until Dark? So this is where this comes from. It's a no. cinematic. Okay, so this is Audrey Hepburn and Richard. Oh Pratt. yes, I have seen. Yes. Like, yes. The yes, blind that's a good movie. Woman. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's but they like, used it effectively. This was to cover up some bullshit. <laughs> well, but go ahead. Are you talking about the effects? No, the whole the use of the lighting when they're going down well, in these yeah. caverns, which you know, again, I like the fact that they designed the caverns to be very claustrophobic. It usually, looks, when yeah. you see, it these looked movies, realistic. It, you know, did. In, it didn't in, look like a set. I know, no, yeah. not at all. Usually, when you see this stuff, they've That's like like national treasure or something. They're huge. And there's like, a blue light in there. Yeah. Like, like there's yeah. just a light in here. We don't no, know where. No, from. this yeah. is light for the audience. Yeah. This place looks like it smells like what they're saying. Yeah, and it is illuminated solely by their flashlight and. So they're the Smells actors are like lighting when he's themselves. Experimenting yeah, no way. In a carriage. And then they're supposed to be. It's you know creating suspense that they're in the dark with these creatures that. Yeah, Kerwin's but they don't created. know that. There's no suspense there because well, they don't know that until they just see like. Yeah, but by they, then first they, they have to find another book and read another history. They like, wait a second. A long. Time. The story of this whole movie is right here. In these but few pages. by then they've built it up so the audience just assumes they're gonna find something down there. You know it because as soon as they start talking about like there's a transference of right. flesh from like I don't even I'm trying to explain yeah. how that works. The the like if somebody uh, gets resurrected they. Can steal the flesh? Yeah, and somehow oh. all I get is that I somehow you have somebody to oh, is it have the same a, flesh, a massive uh, quantity of no, blood just, in order to hold yourself no, together. Is it the and same flesh that, though? Like if your ancestor, like I'm saying, like my matter is made up of your matter. If I'm your, your if you're ancestor. my ancestor, my yeah. matter is made up of your matter. Yeah. So if I get resurrected and you're already resurrected, I can and, I, and I'm missing pieces of myself. I can like I suck think off of your I can, like, matter. Based, shit over to me. Yeah, based on the evidence we see later in this movie, that's what I'm gonna go. With. That's what that's what's actually happening. <laughs> it's like somehow the the stolen matter wants to get back to its rightful owner. Right. And the only way that you can keep it on yourself is by the right, eating raw this meat. This is a zombie. But what is the rightful He's a zombie. Owner? And like a cannibalistic yeah, vampire. Yeah, it's like too, a Mr. vampire Triple. Frankenstein zombie situation. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But it, yeah. That's like why. That's what it's Lovecraft good. did a lot, right? Because this is an <laughs> idea that isn't something that you see like in every fucking you know movie. Yeah, that you true. that's true. I just don't like their the execution, execution yeah. of it because I'm sure the original story is even really good. I've got the complete Lovecraft. I'm sure I'll read it after this so I can compare it. But like, did did he did he drink Charles' blood or eat like? I think he ate him. Did he eat him? 
Is yeah. that why there was the the skin transfusion thing? Because he ate him. I think oh. they give that. You know, the clue That's to that is after he yeah. stabs Charles, he's got a little bit of flesh on the end oh, of the knife, nice. and they don't show him eating it. But I'm assuming that that's the next thing. Because that's that what I was saying. He ingested happens. him, and that's yeah. why when he brings back, he's he he's taken it back. back to finish yeah. himself. He's ingested because it. we yeah. see from when they find these pits, we see that there's monsters that are experimented on. They're like incomplete. Uh, corpses, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah he was little, working out little the, basket cases, the salts, <laughs> the, <laughs> the essential salts. I love yes. that. <laughs> that you need in your magic rites. <laughs> to, uh, actually it's right. all about salt, people. <laughs> yeah, that's salt God. within. Colin's gonna press a button and his door's gonna open. Salt it's gonna be a laboratory back there. It's like, please enter. I always, I want one of those. I'm like <laughs> that, that basement. <laughs> that, that's where we broadcast out of for the Saturday. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's we can't reveal that. We won't say what like book you pull to right. like. Get it's scary the, down uh, here. It's smoky down here. There are weird colors. There's mm. definitely a few vaulted doors and some death traps you have yes. to get past to get to the Saturday Night Freak Show. But once they find these creatures in the pit, that's when they drop the lantern and the lights go out. And we're in the blackness, and you're just listening to them fumbling around in the dark trying to find the uh, flashlight's not working. The Matches. Find the matches. Suspense. Matches. Again, uh, I'm not I... saying it, it's execute, executed um, yeah, well in the that's, editing. That's, but that's, the, 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 that's the thing. Like, yeah. not the necessarily thing. the following anybody else. I think the editing fails at that point. Because I I like it. Yeah. Well, it would have, like, changed if, like, okay, if they heard, like, a rustling in the darkness. And they're like, light that. We need to know what is moving around us. You know, that would have been scary. They didn't, but they didn't do that. It's like, you saw kind of a monster. Yes. Then they lost light and it's like, they forgot the monster. It you know, really felt for like a few it. seconds, it's like, <laughs> this light's not working. Right, because the monster, <laughs> it's like, the monster's <laughs> just like, it was. hello, I'm a monster. <laughs> They're not making noises. Monster's not making noises. This is like, all right, do you have those double Ds? Oh, what's going on? Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> I think it's supposed to. It's like when they light it, oh my God, the thing's going to be like the right on yeah. top. They want, and that's what they It's were like they're not scared unless they see it. <laughs> 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 <Yes. laughs> if I close my eyes, it's not there. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of oh, feels cool. like it. It's like ostrich. <laughs> but this is where, and I'm going to attack my own movie. You were saying you thought that the special effects there were good. I'm like, I don't know, because the, the weird they effects the they use. Yeah, they were doing better Wait, things in 1992. Uh, but the there's budget. like this weird, it's it's what stop motion, obviously, but they yes. use like this Some blurring yeah. effect. Okay. Yeah, that's okay, what I okay. kept saying. Yeah, yeah, I'm not talking about the stop motion. I'm just talking about literally like the monster body suits, like oh, the yeah. actual molds right. of the, you know, yeah, that shit was good. Yeah, they're kind of like very uh, muscle, sinewy, right. these things that are misshapen. What was that form? weird monster at the very beginning where they found like half of, it was, uh, it was when they were in a in backflash. The when they yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was really good. That was really good. That's what I was like. Is this the guy that did the effects of Return of the Dead? I wonder if he worked on Return of the Dead. Maybe yeah. not like headed or nothing, but this guy was named Tony Todd Masters. Todd Masters. Todd, Todd, Todd Masters. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's just, it looked like an actual person. But it looked yeah. really pieces. good. That it was really good. I'm like, this is the money. All the money is in these few animatronic fucking really good looking things. Or if they were building that gigantic cavernous underground set. I if they, if so. they built that, <laughs> they that's where their that. money went. I, yeah. I can't imagine, yeah. That they, I kind of wish there was things it? behind all those locked doors, you know, because, I mean, like I said, this movie is compacted and compacted with boring scenes of just like, this door's locked. Editing. That's but yeah. that, that this was door's that locked. Was it's like, God damn it, why aren't there sounds five behind, doors? Why aren't there locked? sounds yeah. behind these doors? Something to get you kind of like, what's behind these fucking yeah, that's doors? What we, that's what I said. I was like, these are cells, right? Like, there's people in there. I and, thought, like, his right. experiments yeah. not. Sense when yeah. you mentioned it. And they wouldn't like, be in a pit. Nothing. nothing. Yeah. So yeah. His like, experiments wouldn't be in a pit. They'd be behind these cell doors or something. Like, Right? Like, there's something moving <laughs> Again, in there. That'd be a Don't great video open game. it. Yeah. That would scare the shit out of it. Yeah, you just hear that. <laughs> right? And then you're yeah. walking around with the flashlight, you turn, and then you have God to kill it with a pipe. Double yeah. D's. This is the thing, just too. Like, I mean, this work. feels like <laughs> that portion of it could be it could. in like a Silent Hill video. It could. Game. It, could. Yeah. it yeah. really could. It really could. Because I remember how Lovecraft changed the game. A Silent Hill, I think it was Silent Hill 2 or something, where like you had that. There was a couple of them. You usually do that, like long descent further than. It should be sanely possible oh, yeah. into the earth, you know. Yeah. Which this movie like does. Like Resident Evil, right? You go to the high. You always go deeper, deeper down. Yes. Well, the, I like the video how they games made the, or is that uh, the movies? Video games too. Yeah. yeah you always go deeper, oh, deeper. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't. Like, I like how like there was uh, under the mansion and in the sewers. Yeah. Yeah, but in like Silent Hill, I remember a scene where the guy had to walk, and you just kept walking and walking. It was like he can't be going this far down. And there's another one uh, where you go on like these stairs. 
And you're taking this like spiral staircase down into this fiery Ooh. thing, and you mm-hmm. just keep going down, down, down. And even Nightmare on Elm Street kind of did that, where Nancy goes into the basement to fight Freddy at the end. She yeah. goes into her basement, and then a sub basement, and then the boiler room is under that. Yeah, it's that kind of nightmare, like because right. going down you know, is supposed to like, like represent like, hell is a physical place, and you're going down. To it's it. like well, you this... violated some kind of dimensional space yeah. by going yeah. so far down. Wasn't like and... going down supposed to represent like going into the character's psyche, right? That's why Alice in Wonderland. Also, it's is. always going down. That means you're going into your own personal, like whatever thought. Well, that would make sense. They did that new nightmare as well when she slides down the bed and they go, she drops down into like what is Freddy's hell. Well, that makes sense because that is Kerwin's inner sanctum. I mean, that is where the guy, you know, where we see all the accoutrement of his uh, work. Yeah. All the books that he's learned from, all the salts that he's. His personal library, his laboratory. Coming up next on Kerwin's inner sanctum. (laughs) (laughs) Are all those special guests? We're going to open this door. (laughs) Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking during the movie that we should open a private detective agency because it looks like it so, looks much, so fun much fun to be. Fun. Oh, right. oh my we god, I want to Scooby Doo gang. <laughs> awesome. Are we just getting them white we're like man and sewing Scoob. <laughs> we're yeah. in big trouble here, buddy. <laughs> like wow, like wow, Scoob. <laughs> yeah, roll there's boy, a... Shaggy. <laughs> there's always. Right, like... I'm gonna be Shaggy. You can be Scoob. <laughs> There's always an investigator, I guess, in you know, in H.P. Lovecraft <laughs> fiction. But to actually make, I don't, in none of his stories, there's actually a private investigator who's been hired. But I think this is the great thing of like in 20th century cinema when you make an H.P. Lovecraft story, mm. when you meld it with that film noir, yeah, you know, you're kind of the only yeah. thing you didn't really have was the femme fatale. They never really no, played that no. off well because obviously the guy's attracted to Ward's wife. Yes. And we're like, well, at some she doesn't point, want to Ward, betray him. But yeah, she doesn't want to betray Ward, but Ward is crazy. So at some point, he's going to have to be written out of this and she's going to be free to have an affair with the. Psych or with the detective because he has a dream early where you know, he imagines himself, you know, kissing her. Mm. So it's like this is going to happen, right? But it never actually pays off. There is no real romance between the two of them, which yeah. I thought was like that was a missed opportunity, I guess, for the kind of uh, man. She could have used of any emotion, dude. I thought this lady, she cried, she's not a lot. The greatest dude. She was dead the whole movie. She, I mean, this is why it's like she's on a coke binge. This movie was to pay for her habit. I'm, you know, just speculating, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I mean, the whole movie is just like different movie my there. husband. No, she was so fucking in emotion. I mean, you're talking about she was a distraught in woman in the beginning. Yeah, she was almost she was, tearing her fingers no, off in the you know, trying to explain. What was I even happening saw the husband. scene where she, she tried to kind of like kind of like be like a laughing nervous. I was just like, oh, fuck, this is missing on every acting. Piece. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. That's what the director was saying. Like, act. Ugh. Fine, <laughs> fuck it. It's like we already wasted enough. Well, I'm not I thought it was Oscar. Dude, I'm winning, saying this is no. Sarandon was the only guy that put his heart in this movie. Sarandon. Sarandon. Sarandon oh. doesn't give a fuck how cheap it is. Sarandon is no. gonna put his fucking mark on that movie. Everybody else was just like, <laughs> I'm only getting paid enough to like pay for my like my apartment for the next two months. <laughs> Goddamn L. A. You know, <laughs> well, you didn't think he was going over the top, or is this again another case where the editing I mean, didn't Chris cover? Chris Sarandon's always been a little because he always plays like he always ends up being an English guy, right? So he's always like, "I wouldn't say that if I were you," you know. He always <laughs> goes to like a. <laughs> but is that always in the one other movie where he's an English? Maybe, guy? but maybe that's why Chris. Because I mean, Chris Sarandon did kind of fall out of favor in the nineties. I don't know why. I always liked him. I always really liked him. I just remember he him doing to a lot stage. of like. Did and, he? And so he can be boisterous. I mean, that's yeah. I guarantee that man was. wants to project. That, man, to project. that man was that man born wants for to project. Shakespeare. He was. I, lo- I mean, I it. love. I would watch that play. Yes. Miss Barkley, that's not a safe place to go at this time <laughs> of night. <laughs> I love that guy. <laughs> Maybe okay. only because of Charles. Welcome to Fright, Fright Night. Yeah. Classic for stuff. Real. For real. I love Chris. Oh, uh, Chris Sarandon. Uh, so he did good in this job. He did good in this job. So good. Well, because movie. it gives but him the opportunity. Else, like dude, I said, he gets to play he, Charles Ward, the straight normal guy. Charles Ward, the whacked out, like obsessive but scientist. But he doesn't get to and then play Charles, Charles Ward, Ward, the normal guy. And then there's Joseph a, Kerwin. There's a voiceover every fucking scene. He's the normal <laughs> Charles Ward. He editing again. Yeah, probably. it is editing. Who but, knows? What but was we actually. don't know because if they wanted to stick with that that but whole like Lovecraft. 
straight guy. We want we want the actor. But I kind of wish. I just kind of wish. It's one of those things where, yeah, okay, yeah. Since you're reading a book, Lovecraft, like a lot of old old uh, books, it's all written in letters and narrative. Because I mean, that's how people communicated. It's yeah. almost like the found footage of the day, right? Yeah. <laughs> like letters from the shipmate that found Frankenstein. Well, because it shit. added that reality thing. Yeah, I guess, exactly. That, you know, it's like, oh my god, and it feels this is like how this is people real. communicate. This right. is how people communicate. You might not have newspapers. You might have whatever, but you have letters and. But. Could you do this as a found footage? Story? Well, you have to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some parts of it you could. If a, I just wanted well, to yeah, do that he's with a Dracula, private eye. Right? He's a private eye, so he stay. Oh fuck, dude! Yeah, you might want to edit that we... part out, dude. <laughs> we're doing this motherfucker as a found uh, footage. Copyright right. yeah, sixteen seventy nine freak show. All right, we're that's good. a good idea, dude. <laughs> that's legal. That's, that's legal. great. That's legal. <laughs> we're good. It's copyright. It's copyright. Right. We're good. But I just think that you lose. Because those were, to me, those felt like scenes that were shot and that were supposed to play either, either maybe not chronologically, but those were supposed to be scenes that were played out. But right. like, either they were too afraid that they were boring that they put a narrative. But I mean, like you said, if someone bought it, well, you get they it's... must have edited it like that beforehand. That someone's just gonna like so be like. And then they found a painting, and then you see them having a dialogue, and just some boring guys just like, and they didn't like it, and so she told him. It's like, fuck, why aren't I watching this scene? Why are you telling me she told him to All leave? Because right, yeah. I can see the, this playing out, and they're talking. The idea, yeah. I mean, I think, like, the only thing I can think to say that, you know, it's like, there's so much of Don't a... Protect it. There's so much of... Well, there's so much of like a story there that like it's flashing back and forth in time, and there's so much information to convey yes. that it's faster to just explain. But, but like, it's always true. Because it's but basically she's always like, just sitting there in an office talking to him. But the so one, would understand a good example is when she, when she's telling him the story of their fight, and she's like. I told him that he better find a new place to, and then they show the scene, and it's exactly what she just she, said. She just yeah. says, "You need to you find a new place." Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's literally word for word. It's like, okay, yeah. pick one. You that can't. Was not you a good, can't that's, a, that's a good example. <laughs> but for but, how but, but still, that's why I give you that. This movie didn't rely on the idea that, like, I mean. I won't talk about this to an extent, but but we just saw a movie similar uh, that just came out this weekend that flashed back to a lot of shit, and it didn't bug, it didn't bother the movie, you know, it didn't like you can have an, a, a narrative with flashing back constantly because number one, you have the wife talking to the PI, so people will know this is a backflash to that that night. I still fucking think. About. I mean, like. You know, if you were to do like a straight adaptation of the story, you would be spending a lot of. I mean, because I twirled away as a well, dying the, witch. The way that the you know, Lovecraft writes, it's like you're with this guy for a significant portion of the narrative, and then all of a sudden, we're gonna go back in time to like, and Charles was out doing something in the carriage house, and then you spend time with like Charles, and you see all the shit that he's doing out there, and then you would come back to the present. Before you'd go back again to the past, and then like Charles finding the diary, and then you'd go back to no, the past. Okay, but I'm not past. saying like, they had to do that for every I think time. You'd be like so far removed but what from if you your narrate, narrative. It, but what if you like, narrate some of those scenes, but not so? Because like, okay, I would say the further you get away, the more you narrate. That's my golden rule. I just made it up. That's my golden rule. <laughs> uh, like if the wife is talking to the PI about her husband, we can flash back to those scenes. But then if we're talking about going back further in time, like if we're reading something in a book, that's when you do the narration because he is reading it from a book. But if she's just talking to him, well, like why, number one, why isn't she narrating what happened? Why is the, the P.I. telling me what she said to him? You know, that's stupid. A, because the framework has been well, adapted as a, a private detective. I'm just saying, though. You're saying well, it would be saying, better if it was, but it'd be the story of the woman. I'm just saying, saying that like, here's what happened to my. So the, she staggers. The, the problem movie. with this movie is there's just so many better ways to edit back flashes and and narrating over scenes and like because I like all that stuff. I'm not the type of guy that says if you narrate, it's cheating. Yeah. You know, sometimes that's cool. Like you said, it has that like mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of stylistic thing. that it's, noir. It's thing. Right, yeah, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like if a whole movie's like that, it's like, oh my god, this guy's just gonna tell me the movie. Yeah, that he not shot. when he's giving us the <laughs> you know, the beginning of the movie. It's <laughs> like it's it's hearing impaired for the uh, it's uh, what do they call that nowadays on Blu-ray? Closed captioning. 
Not closed caption. Oh, it's the uh, it's you, for you the, actually hear it. Yeah. They say Captain America, and they go out to the like they explain the whole Laughing. movie. Yeah. Oh, I get you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, descriptive know. audio. Yeah, oh, descriptive audio. Sir, it's pretty yeah. weird. It sounds like an audio book because be then great. they'll because then they'll cut with the dialogue. Sure. It sounds like an audio drama with a narrator. It's kind of yeah, cool. Have that on Captain America they stands up. I don't think dude, I saw that on. Uh, I want to say I saw that the first time on Civil War. Captain yeah. America Civil War maybe was the descriptive audio it's where they're like. They go the thing. Rays and just look in the menu. It's cool. Descriptive audio for the hearing impaired, dude. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> so, so, getting back to that, this uh, wasn't descriptive audio. Well, for as an idiot. example. If you didn't have eyes, you would know what's going on in this movie. <laughs> right. So, as an example of the type of uh, storytelling that I'm telling you about, the uh, there's a H.P. Lovecraft adaptation, which I think is the most direct Lovecraft adaptation. It's called The Call of Cthulhu. And it's made by these uh, guys. It's like an amateur movie made by the H.P. Lovecraft Historical Society. And they film the novel, novelette, short story, as it is written. And so it like it goes through that, like, you know, the different time periods and the different narrators. So, I mean, that's the closest you're going to get to, like, an H.P. Lovecraft story being translated direct to film. But why does it have to be? Well, there's a, you don't but have, there's a difference in medium. There's just a difference in medium. I don't think you need true. to take exactly. I mean, that's Direct a different adaptation. thing, man. It's a different. What's like, your favorite H.P. Lovecraft adaptation? Oh uh, well, I mean, Reanimator, right? And Reanimator is pretty fucking close. If you read the original Reanimators, you can see where they took the three short. It's kind of three. Reanimator is kind of three short stories that that they were Stuart serialized. Gordon and those yeah. guys <laughs> took. But you can see the inspirations they used for all the scenes throughout the movie. But I just don't think, uh, I don't know, I just don't think what a novelist writes. Like, okay, my, one of my favorite book-to-screen adaptations is Psycho, right? I love Psycho. And the and the adaptation uh, uh, from Hitchcock is actually really good. But if you read Robert Block, I love how Robert Block, he'll get you to the end of the chapter. And in the next chapter, he starts always almost like he starts from a different character's perspective and almost like 10 minutes prior mm. than the last chapter started. So it's a cool thing a novelist mm. can do right, yeah, just because he, he can play with time yeah. that, yeah, a, a, a filmmaker, or screenwriter really can't pull off without like, like placing a graphic that's like 10 minutes earlier. There or was, uh, dumb. You know, like over the years, I've read a lot of Stephen King and there's like, you know, they keep on saying, you know, even Stephen King has said, like when you go to see a movie that's based on a book that you enjoy, you're looking for this kind of X factor that's in the book that that's the author's right. voice, and you never get that when you see the movie. Yeah. When you see the movie, Especially you're seeing Stephen the King. plot. Right. Especially Stephen King. But I saw a movie, and it was <gasps> called Riding the Bullet. Ironically, oh, by yeah. Mick Garris, who I can't oh, stand anything People... he does. But that movie captures the voice of Stephen King. Crazy. And the way that it does it is through the use of voiceover and uh, the ability to flash back and forth in time. And so, like, it does actually feel like, and I think maybe, you know, I'm going to take that, but it is the voiceover because you're hearing from Stephen King's, right. you know, own mouth. Like, this is right. the, what he wrote in that character's voice, you know, as what they're feeling in their head. I think that's also the point of the point of voiceover in this movie, whether they carry it off or not yeah. well, is that you're supposed to be getting, like, the emotional response of the character while you're watching, like, they got into a fight. Here's what she thought about it. But this doesn't she's have like explaining how it affected her, or you know, the detective is explaining at the beginning, like you know, about the weather report that you say about Providence. <laughs> <laughs> he's <giving> you, like, <clears throat> today in the news, like, Charles the Dexter Ward escaped from the mess of how you know it's like well, Providence was located on the in the head. Uh, you know, the, the shipping business did this and all this, and the smell of the river and all. It's setting like a place. Dude, Lovecraft in your mind shipping business that they did with <laughs> with that a novelist would do, and he's trying to communicate. The director's trying to, yeah. or the screenwriter's trying to communicate the novelist's. But it's just like, dudes sitting in an setting. office. It's just people sitting in an office. It looks like a sitcom. It looks like oh, we got three sets. We got the we got the house of Charles Dexter's Ward. We got the office of the private eye. And the dungeon. The dungeon underneath Charles. De it just feels like it's like. I get what you're saying, but like that's why that shit works in a book and not in a movie. Because we need to see things in a movie. Side we need to see. Well, I was. We were talking about narration, especially uh, concerning Stephen King. Did the It adaptation that had voiceover, didn't it? Like, 
in the younger stuff when they're talking. Oh, when some, the of, it club and some of it did. Some of it did because it did. It, it did, did. It did. because they were from. always because they were was, always like talking older, to each other. Right. They were always was, like, I, I remember was, back uh, in the day. It was the older kids all narrating the younger version. Right. Okay. It just yeah, had the. Yeah, yeah. It just had the. Right. I think they narrated that and then we went to present time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because like, yeah, because I don't think narration is like bad. It's supposed to add something. It's just like I don't know if this guy was just so uncharismatic that he's just like uh, poor John Terry. John Terry, the I don't care. Of Jack, on I got, he gets yes. paid. Travis doesn't Fucking, like him. My opinion doesn't like hurt his career, obviously. So <laughs> very true, you know. But fuck what him. we say here has little effect on the outside world. Yeah, but maybe one day, <laughs> one day. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you got, you got a well, I'm just saying, one day, guys. Chris one day. One you day. have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to believe in yourself. You have to. We can't become the movie review uh, yeah, channel yeah. we want to be. That guy goes all in. He's awesome. Oh, all He's in. awesome. They find everything, and then they just, like... They lose Lonnie. Can we just talk about that? Lonnie they falls lose. Well, he falls in the pit. He falls in the pit, and they're just like, "Fuck him!" He's, he's dead. like, "Hey, he's man, dead. can I have another like? Can he's I get gone. another like? Well, what are you gonna do? You're in the dark, right? Just leave. You're, you're, you're like, dark. how far underground like, are you? I don't know. Like, guys, this thing's got my legs. Guys, guys. Sorry, it's got my legs. It's pulling me down, guys. Guys. Well, it was very relaxed. I was like sitting there thinking, like, this would be like where you would hear him go, something, and then like go to you know some audio cue of some sort. Yeah. The screaming stops. So it's like, I would have oh, gone shit, to get snapping. help. Right. Just saying. Right. But no, where were they going to go? Out of there. But also, like, they, you're being chased by a they creature. They do find their way out. They do. But the, my problem They're just with snooping that around is, at that point. Like, they know they're going to blow the place up. They're like, fuck it. Let's yeah. see what's down there. They, shit. they lose a guy. Lonnie dies. But they also just blow up all proof that they have that fucking yeah. Lord is crazy. Evil. Like, who yeah. has to be Who would out? believe it? Who but you have proof. It. They have proof. You have proof. You can take it. You no, know, he only has a suit. He has a it's suitcase. Not disappear, yeah, you find this there. whole thing. Like that's where we find the diary of the past. We find out, like, oh my god, Ward isn't like whatever. He's actually the son of. Uh, if nothing else, he you is prove Charles. That he's crazy. Or he is Joseph Kerwin. Yeah, he's resurrected. Kerwin. Resurrected. Right. We yeah. should have known that by the bad teeth. Right. <laughs> I didn't know Doctor Ash was the bearded. Chris Sarandon. Like, yeah, they, I didn't, that know, was that. I didn't so, know that either. At the end of the movie, full, full, circle, full circle, back to the beginning. Joseph now, Kerwin is vanquished. Well, no, I, I have a question gone. about that. Like, it seems like he wants to take the flesh back, but then they both just vaporize. Like, I, yeah. I would have thought, Some like, kind of cosmic he would have taken the... It really the was. same matter can't occupy the same But space. he's taking it I back. I just made that up. I don't understand why Charles <laughs> I know Ward that's doesn't true. get it back, Physics. and he's yeah. like, oh, I'm back. <laughs> like, why Charles Ward is not there? Like, uh, fucking, uh, Kerwin oh, should be he gone. Didn't live. Right. Why didn't he? Yeah, that Why doesn't make Ward any live? sense. Like, because his remains were there. He brings the bones and all that into the uh, the pad itself. Yeah, right. he brings. It was so then he comes alive. He's completely he, resurrected. His bones come alive and it starts sucking the flesh off of Ezra. Right. But then why isn't there a completed? Kerwin. Huh. Kerwin. Kerwin. Oh, yeah. Kerwin. 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 Yeah, but why isn't it completed? Why isn't, why isn't, back? Why isn't Darwin? Because this movie didn't have a way out of that. I How did they do that in the that. book? I don't like, remember. Oh, shit. <laughs> it feels like Ward should have come back and then. I Just know, maybe a monster? Maybe Flesh can only come back once. I don't know. I Who knows? Yeah, right. They exploded well, I'm still going, a big, with, the, I'm still going light. with the same matter can't occupy. It was like a. <laughs> they are transported to another dimension. Why would you even write that in the book? I don't know. But it probably is answered in the book. <laughs> probably. The only <laughs> nod that this movie gives to, like, the whole Cthulhu mythos is at the end, because that's, you know, H.P. Lovecraft yeah. is right, right, is at the end when uh, uh, Kerwin is talking about how, like, I can actually, like, the power to move stars oh, shit. The and deep, call bring down, down demons, demons from, from the sky. Yeah, oh, right. God, it belongs to me. Or it's mine. That was fun. <laughs> demons from behind the star. Or, that was or, Hamlet. That's what I wanted. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to tell you, I should have probably said this earlier. So this movie was adapted to film in 1963 <laughs> by Roger Corman, and it was called what? Yeah, The Haunted Palace. Oh, it started, shut up. Uh, it That would have been good. Vincent what? Price. I watched it this Vince, week, Vincent actually. Price? Don't. Okay, well, here's, what? let me tell you this. <clears throat> so... You Even though it's an H.P. Lovecraft story, I don't recall it actually acknowledging that anywhere. It's called Edgar Allan Poe's The Haunted Palace. No, fuck. What? And it was part of the Edgar Allan Poe cycle Where? that Roger Corman was doing. AIP? AIP. So it's like one of those, it is, 
one of the Edgar Allan Poe weird. movies that he did, Haunted but it's Palace. the story, the case of Charles Dexter Ward. Fucking weird. Only in that one, uh, Dexter Ward, or sorry, Kerwin takes possession of, uh, you know, Charles Ward. He oh, doesn't actually. It's not a body. It's yeah. Like, so he can he be just cured possesses. by the end because it's the '60s. It's the '60s. You got to have a happy ending. Yeah. It was like in the in the books that like it needs to justify it. So if someone kills somebody, they need to be justly like punished. Yeah. <clears throat> That's first mention of both Cthulhu and Yog Sagoth. In you mentioned Cthulhu? Yeah, 1960. You have this? No. Oh. It's, on, <laughs> it's on Daily Motion. You can look it up. Oh, Dailymotion.com. You, you can watch what it. What is that? It sounds so, like money. It's so funny, no, though, because no, no, the, the scene when the doctor's like talking YouTube, to her, yeah. and he's like, uh, there's not much we can do. He, the way he was talking, I was like, he sounds like Vincent Price. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. There you go. Hi, I'm Vincent Price. <laughs> yeah. Probably should have front-loaded that. Great. So, great. all right. So, yeah. uh, good on ready. resurrected. Uh, and yeah. are we ready for all right, a mailbag? So, what we're gonna do, folks, is we're gonna summon Igor, our mail guy, and then after that, we're gonna go around Robin and do our final thoughts. You'll find out what each one of us thought about the resurrected. So, first of all, Igor, Igor. where are Igor. you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Thank you, Igor. If you, he kind of smells like what Charles Dexter Ward's right, been I experimenting like... with. Uh, bath day does only come around twice a year. You just need to hit him up with some Febreze. Maybe, It'll be fine. Maybe. Just spritz him down every night. <laughs> yeah, Febreze. Yeah, I'll do it when he's sleeping. That <laughs> way, it does. So he's just like one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you, <laughs> listener, want to write in to us so we will read your email or uh, comments on the air, you can get a hold of us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or on Twitter. We're at Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us the old fashioned way at Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And, or yeah. if you're G Money, you can direct messages oh, on uh, Twitter. Are we, are in which we case, you can. our relationship to that? Well, G-Money? if you direct message, you can write more than 100 and. 40 characters. Or you can just, characters. you know, you can open up the web. Hey, yo, I'll call you. you know. So G Money says, uh, I posed a question on Facebook. <laughs> what is your favorite HP Lovecraft adaptation? You guys didn't answer. Your favorite? I, where, did I, where did this Sean come from? I don't think I follow, follow us. Of all the HP Lovecraft that I've read, uh, hmm, I haven't read HP Lovecraft. Oh, you son of a <laughs> I bitch. Wouldn't, I wouldn't. He's know the greatest horror writer. There's. I know there's a collection Yes. But I just, I'm not there yet. He it's formed good. most of the ideas of yeah. modern horror. I, I, I'm getting that feeling from you <laughs> and your constant barrage of H.P. Lovecraft. I'm not that uh, far one off. One day, yeah. one day I'll get All there. Right. I'm not that far off. I've only read War of the Worlds. I'm interested, but. You know I'll that Goy painter guy? War of the Worlds. That's, uh, That's a very boring movie. That's H.U.L. Oh, shit. Then, yeah, no. Then, yeah, no. I've read nothing. Sorry. All right, What's well, uh, G Money says uh, Dreams in the Witch House from Masters of Horror. The TV show is a good condensed H.P. Lovecraft tale. It says Dagon was always on sci fi, so I can at least say it's watchable. Uh, from what I remember, plenty of fish opinion. people and tentacles. But for him, fish people. it is from beyond that takes the top spot. Such a winning combination of cast and crew, awesome special effects, and Barbara Crampton in tip top shape brings it up a couple oh, of notches. Barbara Crampton. <laughs> So that's G Money. That was seriously that creepy. Was, wow. Well, it was. <laughs> I mean, I know have you have seen a, Reanimator? I know we have a fan club and Barbara I have, Crampton. But... Reanimator is very yeah. Barbara Crampton. Yeah, is a fan uh, of me. She's still of, working. Of that movie is invasive as far as I can sorry. She's Barbara a fan Crampton. of yours. Yeah, wow. Maybe, I hope. Wow. <laughs> I just gave her a lot of compliments. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan of hers. All right, wait. You hear that sound? That sound is the oh sound of the wrap up bell. Christ. Here it comes. Oh no. Just look down. Just look down. The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Larry. God, what did you guys ever say to him? Is it, I can I know. look up? I don't like. I don't, he just, won't let us. I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go. Uh, so or, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That Whatever. brings us to the wrap ups, then, and that means <laughs> Travis is gonna tell us why he hates the resurrected. So, well, he already did. Yeah, I oh. hate this <laughs> movie. Hate. It was so boring. Uh, yeah, I just. I don't think love. I mean, every Lovecraft. I love Reanimator. Um, I've not seen the Masters of Horror, Dreams in the Witch House that G Money has spoken of. It's got the guy from Dagon in it. Well, fuck. Is it's it directed the, by Stuart Gordon? Yes. Oh, oh. Fuck. 
Oh, the goddamn it, I have G it. money. This is uh, I loan it. To I you. might loan it. Yeah, I might borrow it. I just do Lovecraft. It's so internal, dude. I mean, I've always thought this way about King Barker and Lovecraft. The horror is so internal. You really can't do a visual thing about it. It's always about what's going on inside, or it's always about just something so interdimensional that you can only talk about it. It's only it's only fun if you can sit there and imagine it. But if you're watching a bunch of people talk about it, you're like, I want to see it. What are you yeah. talking about? Like, I want to see it. And it's like, well, you've got 82 minutes. <laughs> it's like, fuck! I want to see this. It's like, well, we can't spoil it. It's like, well, that sucks. Every Lovecraft movie, like Necronomicon... Uh, I mean, fuck, I hate Dagon. It's crazy how much uh, that uh, Lenora. Is Lamora? that what it was called? Lamora? Lamora? Lamora, Lady Dragon. Uh, that was a better adaptation of uh, Shadow of uh, Shadow over Innsmouth than Dagon was. Um, so, like, Lovecraft is so, I mean, I don't know why it's so goddamn hard for people to get. I don't know if they're trying to be too like, well, no, this is, this is such classic literature. I want to adapt it to the best of my ability instead of just trying to adapt the. That's why I think In the Mouth of Madness reigns supreme because it's adapting the idea. It's not trying to do his story. It's trying to give you the idea of what Lovecraft brings across. But, I mean... I do like the idea of, I mean, every Lovecraft, I mean, shit, if you look at Pickman's model, it's almost the same idea, right? Like, there's always going to be, there's this thing in a basement we're going to get to in the end of the story that we have to, like, get around to, like, who is this person? We got to get to know this person. We got to read a few letters from this person. We got to, like, hear a few weird stories. Just a few stories. A few weird stories to pique our interest, like, we, like, and nobody found the body. Or, you know, like, and there was scratching on the wall or whatever. Just to get you interested so you can get to the last 20 pages of, like, and then he saw the thing that drove him to madness. <laughs> but in a movie, it's like, fuck, it, unless it's only 40 minutes or something. It's so long. It's so long. It's such a long wait to try to get to anything exciting. And they can't really put anything scary out there because it's, no, there's nothing scary going on. They're just talking about what happened. There's nothing currently scary going on. They're not going to, like, walk through a house and have a cat jump out. And like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, just because that's not what Lovecraft is. Lovecraft is, like, reading the story of somebody that went through something crazy and the power comes from the idea that you can't see what he saw. That's why Lovecraft doesn't work for movies. The power comes from the idea that you could only read the explanation from letters that somebody's because like the you tentacles saw it, you would lose your mind. The, like like in the Mountains of Madness when they're like the 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 structures Shock-offs. look like oh. a mathematician gone mad or whatever. Like so he's like, what kind of angles are this? You're just trying to imagine what kind of weird monoliths and like. So I just non-Euclidean geometry. You're like what? I, yeah, right. right. Exactly. <laughs> Weird shit. So it's like I just don't. I've never seen a movie do it right. I think Reanimator worked just because it's a story about a doctor bringing things to right. life. It's not a difficult thing. It's, it doesn't have the kind of like spatial fucking like whoa like. But like this movie, I mean, this movie could have been better. Really, it's just the idea that like. If I was if I was with this wife dealing with Charles Dexter Ward, then it would have been a big shock that oh my god, he's actually his ancestor. But since the wife didn't even fucking live with him at the time, it, it, like there was no connection to anything. It was just a woman talking to a fucking private eye about like this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, and they're like, well, we gotta get some running time in this movie. So you go do this, and I'm going to call you. And I found out some info. It was just like fucking shit. It was just like, I don't know, scene after scene after scene, waiting, just waiting to get to the pits at the end. Mm. And even the pits at the end, it wasn't really justified. They're just like, we're blowing up. No, I want to see what's down there. All right. You know, we're just still traveling. And then down there is another 20 minutes of, like, finding out more backstory, so what you see down there is even important. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, fuck, man. Like, I can see how this would be a good movie or a good story. I'll have to, like I said, I'll have to read the original uh, story when I get home. 
But I think the movie fails. Like I would not recommend. It's a. I would recommend this movie as a good sleep agent. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I still think some of the effects were good. Chris Sarandon does a good job. Uh, other than that, like I don't know. I was worried. I was like, did this? Is this what Dan O'Bannon was dying? Is like, is he sick? This looks like this looks like Lucio Fulci movies when he was sick. He was sick for many years. It turns out Crohn's disease. Oh, yeah, that's right. Not good. No, it means you shit all the time. That's it's why like it's painful. Yeah, yeah it's I bet he was sick during that. It doesn't feel like the same energy. I mean, maybe it's just because Return of the Living Dead has more. Uh, Fun or comedy, fun. maybe because he does he didn't direct Alien, but like this just didn't feel like Dan O'Bannon in a weird way. I don't know how I can explain that because I've only seen like two movies. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe His editing cut was taken away from it. Him. Could be that could be, <laughs> but what was there still wasn't very interesting. So I don't recommend it. Moving on. Um, I haven't read uh, any. Um, <gasps> any uh, uh, H.P. Lovecraft, but I've read enough to understand what you're talking about when you when you read a story and realize that it's... Uh, to make a movie version of it will not live up to... Uh, will, <laughs> will not live up to uh, uh, what came before it. Um, I think the major thing with this movie is it needs to be cleaned up. Majorly. The editing. Like, this is one where I would love if somebody went back and uh, 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 recut this into something. Um, something better than what we got. Um, what I like about this movie is the last half of it. Um, even that gets a little overly long. But I do like... Um, I mean, it all gets better when they go down into the pits or and down into the catacombs under the house. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love all that. Um, I like, even though they may have been uh, not uh, great effects, um, and then maybe they even tried to hide him a little bit, but I do like just, they were on screen and you had weird fucking resurrected half corpses going after people. Like, I like that. Even if it's bad, even if like there's some weird MTV blur effect on it at some point in the pit, like I like it. I like that they, they did that. And, uh, especially the one like we were talking about, the one that floated in the river and all that. Like you're right. That seems like that's mm-hmm. where the money went. Like, I like that. Um, the story, whew, um, it takes a long time to get to those pits, and uh, like I said, the editing could have been brought together. Chris Sarandon is, uh, like I said, uh, wait, what did I say? The third best performance uh, of his career. I really liked him in this. Um, he's really good. Um, as far as the whole thing goes... <laughs> your I, soul just left your body. It really, it really <laughs> did, because I have to make a decision on this. Um, uh, I'll wait for the day they do... Uh, an edited version of this. Um, uh, I love elements of it, but I can't recommend it. I give it two uh, coked out Asian love slaves out of five coked out Asian love slaves. <laughs> um, I didn't hate it. I, 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 I don't know. I, I couldn't really decide if it was if it was just the story that I liked, like the potential, like the shell of the movie that I liked. Um, but I don't know. I don't think I really, I don't think I hated it. I, I agree with everything that we've said about the editing, the editing just, well, it wasn't edited. Um, there was so many scenes that it started to reel me in. Like when they went down to the catacombs, I was like, yeah, like I, I want to know what's down there, but then they're in there for, so long like hallway after hallway they knock on like eight doors and I'm like I'm over it I don't care what's there anymore what do you think of this door what do you think it's made of Mm, feels like oak well let's move on to the next like they got me interested and then they took so long that I was no longer interested (laughs) (laughs) but I did like the show I like this story I really do Um, I I think I want to go read the story now because or the the actual written story because I think it could have been really great I I agree that I would like to see an edited version of this because I think it would rock. We'll do I it. I really do, for sure. Yeah, we could do that. We can. Probably. I like the, I like the um we've also I really do like the monsters. I really like that they kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah. Like there's no they like, feel very thingy. Yeah. There's, there's no there's like a thingish element to it. There's no like sci-fi moments and all of a sudden like boom, body. It's like, "Whoa, where did that <laughs> come from?" Like it's I don't know. That was awesome. Chris Sarandon I, oh. Everything's a stage to that man, and I love him. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, I didn't hate it. I I think it uh, had really good potential. I think everyone else acting was terrible. But, yeah, I don't hate it. I'd recommend it. All right. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> I don't find this movie to be boring. I am, I'm... I'm willing to admit that there is a pacing issue with it mm-hmm. that where, you know, I mean, when you find out years later that O'Bannon's cut was taken away from him and he's like, he basically disowned the movie because, you know, apparently if you use outtakes, it's like he selected, I want this take to cut to this take and this one. And they're like, eh, we'll take this take, this take and this one. You know, I mean, you're using different cuts of performances and everything. Mm-hmm. So this is. For all intents and purposes, even though his name is on it and he directed all of the material that we're watching, not his final cut or his movie. However, I think it is next to the Call of Cthulhu, the amateur movie. I think this is the best representation that I've ever seen of the atmosphere of a H.P. Lovecraft story being adapted to film. Because Reanimator, all the Stuart Gordon ones are like filtered through Stuart Gordon's appetites or interest mm. in sex and violence like extreme violence <laughs> right you know which is not lovecraftian at all they don't feel lovecraftian they've basically taken the idea and they do decent adaptations of the stories i think but uh they just don't feel like the, like he misses lovecraft by a pretty wide margin where this one it feels like they're they're in the ballpark i mean yeah. atmosphere wise they're almost you know there with the uh, you know the insane asylum, the flashbacks to the uh, you know the 1700s, mm-hmm. the you know cavernous bowels of this place, <clears throat> um, I like the addition of the the detective story on top of it. I think John Terry does a fine job. I'm not saying you know again I didn't find him as boring as uh, Travis did or Sean did, and I guess he's not as horrible yeah. as Holly said that he was. But I mean, he was a capable actor doing a job where it's like, basically, he's in the position to, you know, I'm finding all this stuff out. So I'm the guy that, you know, everybody tells me information. I go around and ask a question and they tell me stuff because I'm the private detective. So it's like he's fine until the end where he actually becomes confrontational with uh, with Ward. Which was the best part on his behalf. Yeah, because that's where that's <laughs> yeah. the point yeah. where he's actually, you know, he's now like, armed the with shit all the, the information house. that I've found out. Yeah, yeah. that now <laughs> I get to be a, a an actionable right. influence on the plot itself. So that's what he's supposed to do, I guess. Um, for pe- for people that like me and Sean have never read H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, is his writing? As complex, yes, as because yeah. this, I mean, as the it, idea, it the idea to be of this, very is, intelligent, and okay. like he, I mean, because I always got the impression just from what I've heard, and it, it would that feel it would like be reading a math, it would be a difficult Probably. read. It yeah. kind of is. It's, he's dry because he's a very. He's a dude in the yeah. 30s that, that he appreciates the 1800s. So he tries to write that way. He, and it's just like, oh, shit. all of his characters like are boring antiquarians, right? <laughs> Which they're all antiquarians and Anglophiles. So basically, all of his people are extensions of himself where they love old, ye old English. Oh, dude, that's why yeah. everything's they, Maine. Yeah. Fucking. Uh, he uses the, you know, the U's and the color. Uh, uh, he <laughs> spells like, Okay. Yeah, Kalur. Yeah, dude. He, he, he doesn't write like a normal person would just write a narrative. He makes sure that it tries to sound as classic as possible. But he's also almost trying like to use... poetry. He's also trying to ground it as best he can in like the science, the science that they knew at the time. Like well, he's they were very interested. Yeah, like the they Tesla were very was, interested you know, in Tesla this. Tesla was right, a person right, yeah. at, at that yeah. time. Uh, Water ape theory, fucking. I mean, this is why a lot of what these guys wrote is the science kind of of today. I mean, the shit that they're talking about. Yeah, it's not like exact. You know, they didn't. You they're know, fish people. Mm. Yeah. Shit. But that's all evolution, right? That's the idea of that's evolution. We're talking yeah. about horror through evolution that we wouldn't right. we wouldn't understand our primal originators. Well, he was the guy right? who made the leap to say, I mean, I don't but know like who did multiple it. Multiple dimensions them. that exist on the same plane, like string yeah. theory and shit. And it's that like, the idea that like human life originated like these beings from you know some other galaxy or planet, like 
populated the Earth or made adjustments in the human DNA. Yeah, like so Prometheus. Now, like, well, yeah, exactly, but, but nowadays we might say that, madness. like, oh, a piece of meteorite came down and seeded the Earth. But this is the idea the that we came actually, from they other made, things. They mm-hmm. made humans. Yeah, the yeah, we brain. evolved from them. Everything yeah. on Earth evolved from Cthulhu and the Shagoths. Yeah, I mean, it's so it's he great. made this cosmology, <laughs> you know? It's so he's the first guy to make that kind of leap, and then to make this cosmology, which is connected across all these stories. Yeah, Conan even also. Uh, even if it's, you know, the case of Charles Dexter Ward, somehow he'll work in, like, he's got this master, you know, like, mythology in the background that he'll connect to, and these other authors, you know, through, I guess, from his like, time At least four now, other authors. Well, even now, people still, you know, Stephen King's made stories that have, like, the continuation or con- contribution to the, yeah, what's now you can't, it's like a new god mythos. Yeah, it's like a know? new god. It's an evil god. It's like a new Satan. Fuck Satan. Cthulhu now. You know, it's the science version of Satan. <laughs> because it's like, uh, because it, it's like a, it's like a self. It doesn't care. Mythology. No, I'm yeah, just saying oh, the yeah. idea. The idea itself is like, it's like wow, it's intricate. And it has all of mm-hmm. these things, but it's like a cosmology that some guy came up with and populated with mm-hmm. all of these deities. Nilothotep. <laughs> I well, love he, they say tap. he's like the the Tesla. I think Tesla <laughs> uh, uh, inspired. Yeah, me. Nilothotep. Nilothotep goes around with like a film projector and shows you your city after it's de- uh, like after it's been demolished, and then you go outside and it's demolished. <laughs> I mean, that's as simple as the da da. Yeah. But another writer explored his like actual like the Egyptian worship of Nilothotep and shit. It's yeah, all but that's what's cool. It's cool it that these like four into, authors yeah. like talk to each other and lines. like created a universe. <laughs> Even like, I mean, that's just an awesome idea. I mean, especially nowadays in the Marvel like post Marvel movie universe where movies are trying to connect. It's cool that these authors in the early 1930s connected, and whether you knew it or not, their stories all connected to a bigger mythology. Mm-hmm. I mean, Conan the Barbarian stories, Cthulhu stories. I can't remember the other two guy, the other two authors, but I don't remember what they did. But there was August Derleth and uh, Robert E. Howard and uh, that one guy I can never recall Clark Ashton Martin, Clark Something like Martin, the, whatever. Smith. Clark, yeah, correct us. You, named, you just <laughs> we named should have three a, cars. We <laughs> should have a we should have a correction uh, spot on the show. <laughs> well, like corrections. Oh, no, if we, be, no, I know, too like long. No. this fucking guy <laughs> said this. Oh, we can't shit. do that. We'll just be doing a podcast of that. Yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, I think you know, you have to see this movie. I, it's unfortunate that you can't. I, you know, most that's what I'm saying. We're either talking to like the one guy who's seen it, who's stuck with the podcast this long, and like, good for you, Thank sir. You. And I you. assume that you're a fan of it Appreciate if you stuck it. with it this long. But the unfortunate thing is that like no one else has even heard of this movie unless you're in Germany. Uh, and we thank you for listening. Maybe our friend in Britain that writes us. Maybe. I mean, yeah. if you've seen The Resurrected, confirm to us that oh, it, has, do. it does have like a life somewhere. Even if you didn't like it, just tell us, you know, that you've seen it, because I'm curious just how far uh, its reach has gone. But, yeah, I mean, especially, you know, I think it does a disservice to Chris Sarandon, who did turn in one of, you know, his Chris Sarandon per- Great horror performance. performances. Great. Uh, which, you know, I mean, and nobody's seen it, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, it does a disservice to Dan O'Bannon, who, you know, is no longer with us anymore. So yeah, I uh, think Dan O'Bannon did a disservice to this movie. But- you just had your piece. You had. Your piece. Yeah. So uh, that's a definite check out the resurrected for some uh, unusual thrills on your Saturday night viewing. And then until next week, we're going to be watching. That's it. That's it for the resurrected. Next week, we're going to be watching Travis's pick. Travis, what are we watching next week? We're watching Sean S. Cunningham's house. Ding <laughs> dong, you're dead. <laughs> so. Until next week, the basement is going dark.